East side. It feels like Nico almost could not have done more in that in that second map. So, uh, so you want someone to join him. Device on the other side as well, playing incredibly well. But did he did have Rez and Plopski both playing pretty good behind him. So at least he had some more support. Nico had, had Nexo with a good game, but, but yeah, just just wasn't really enough. Wasn't the kind of impact that you'd like. Here we go, Device creeping up to the half wall. All five players, this nade could do damage, but they've got to hold on. The initial contact has got to go well. They turn. Oh, the double nade blows up everyone. Nexa and Nico gone. B bombsite gone. Yeah, and if Amanek doesn't get that immediate double kill, this isn't even a conversation. The round is lost already. Now at least Jackson Hunter could kind of run over here. If they get random headshots pretty quickly, maybe they could try and go for the retake and actually win the round, but it is very unlikely just given how this has been set up right here. Grenades are already out. They didn't blow anyone up. The smoke is there as well. And they're gonna try and see if they can flash their way in. Bit of a fight standing in the smoke, actually. Not a bad idea, although Rez has gone down. They're gonna find Plopski as well. They don't have a kit right now picked up. I don't know if there's one out on Banana. Oh, Hunter picks up the kill, and they're gonna go straight for the defuse. I can't believe they found Linus like that. No. What a disgusting way to win. I can't believe they made that retake happen. Two on got to accept it. But, I mean, it continues a trend that we saw in Mirage. Didn't see it too much on Ancient, obviously, um, where it felt like NIP was having some good rounds that was getting them into positive situations and situations that they're in, they're in control and um, not able to close out those rounds. You, you, the number of rounds on Mirage where Rez was able to get an opening double kill in middle and yeah. still slip away from them. It's happened again here. Great nade stack, double kill for you, free bomb site and a better retake. Pop Flash works, and Nexa gets the opening frag. Yeah, actually looked like the deal. He, he was sort of almost tracking him, but none of the shots connecting. Device trying to do some damage with the AK-47. No real surprise that they picked those up. A couple of MP9s here, but on Inferno, you... You have to get close to them at some point. Amanek sneaking through the smoke. That's a little bit surprising. That's a really bold push. Goes one for one with it. Double pit setup is still very strong, so Hunter and Jax feeling comfortable and confident. And they're going to back on out a little bit here in IP. Try and set up something towards the B bomb site. They do have three smokes, so they could, they can smoke construction, they can smoke CT spawn, they, could, they can do whatever they want. Yeah, problem is they don't have a Molotov for the position of Nexa. So Device is actually going to choose to go in pretty dry contact up to this point. Flashbang out, he's going to turn the corner. Nico was expecting the smoke to give away the game. And now, Nexa, what do you do? All your help is so far back, and NIP have broken into the bomb site. That's a really, really brilliant call. And all the way at the back of the new box there, he was playing with a Molotov in hand. So, so once the flash is in, he can't even really just even walk to a weapon and go for any kind of a fight. His teammate goes down while flashed. Linus realizing that they're both there. And that's probably a really smart choice. They have that third smoke that they never used. Yeah. They're going to just block them off. And well they, they wisely held on to it until they knew where the retake was going to come from because that could have gone towards CT. I was kind of suggesting a little bit, which was to set up like a real execute instead of flashing their way into that first fight. It's also possible that, that the Molotov that gets thrown from Newbox suddenly does a lot more. You know, it slows them down and everything, but there was no warning. Nice little boost here. Unless they get attacked from middle, in which case it's not going to be that much fun. Yeah, in which case that would suck. Although, again, you you imagine you're going to hear some flashbangs if they're going to try and take bracket control. The Deagle from Nico. Opening kill, and now the setup of that. This is the problem. Evacuating the setup is so difficult. And Hampus has a double kill. A bomb site's open, and again, Nexa and Nico going to rotate over, but far too late. Excuse me. Oh, no, Bombs bomb. dropped a T-ramp. Why? Why is the bomb at T-Ramp? <laughs> well, unfortunately, Nico and Nexa don't really know about it. No, they don't. But they have moved into kind of a, a, a close position. This all this running from Plopski. He's at least not going to double back, but that's definitely been heard. And can Nexa put together the uh, the information here? If he can, maybe oh, no. he could catch him. He's got the Deagle. It's going to be a quick shot if he can get it. Plopski is a little bit low on health already. It's going to be the MP9. He just barely makes it across. 18 health left. Yeah, if he had the AK, Plopski would have been dead, and the bomb would have been on the ground with 40 seconds left. I'm kind of surprised that they're not going for it. I'm just surprised that Nexa hasn't challenged. He's waiting for Nico. That's going to allow the bomb to go down, but it's all on this kill. If, if Nexa can't get Hampus... Yeah, then it won't matter. Another MP9 picked up here. A little bit of a lineup and a good headshot for Hampus, and that is probably all they need. Nico going to take the AK and should be backing on out of there. 
the smoke just to keep him a little bit safe. Yeah, slowly backing on out. That is... It's, it's a good round for an IP to win. But you suddenly realize how much was on, on the line when the bomb is that far back. That can easily, easily go horribly... Interesting. They've been somewhat aggressive, at least on Mirage. Buying in some of these rounds, even when maybe they shouldn't have. Stack at top mid on the A side. Device able to clean up nicely with the Mac 10. Three of them just almost uh, in the space of five seconds. Amanek taking a little bit of damage too. And he's obviously on his own on the bomb side, so not any trouble, no real danger here for NIP in this particular round. Not something that they're used to. They've started way behind on the other two maps. Finally, they're ahead. Yeah, this has got to be a refreshing change of pace, at least for the moment. Uh, they still have some ways to go when the guns come out, if they can keep up this kind of success. But it's certainly better than starting in what? Like a 2-6 hole on Mirage. I think it was 0-9 on Ancient. This, yeah. is, uh, this feels much better for them. Surely does. And maybe a little bit of a weird feeling for G2. Maybe not used to it right now. See how they do when they get pick up all of the rifles i mean so much of the ct defense on inferno has to has to deal with grenades and having you know rotating those in and out of the b bomb site and all the rest of it something that we we were watching mibr on this particular map yesterday and they weren't they weren't doing that much of that you know you, you were talking about sending a third player over to try and help smoke the yeah. top of banana or something like that and then you can you can rotate them back to the a bomb site but and I, I really am a fan of Amanek, but he's been missing some shots, I think, on, on yes. both the first two maps, really. Yeah, we saw a couple easy ones he missed on Ancient, and, and obviously missed a, a real easy shot, I think, in that final round uh, on Mirage. Yeah. Not the reason they lost the map, but certainly the reason why they lost the deciding round of the map. Yeah, they probably could have done a lot to uh, defend it if he had picked that one up, so that's just unfortunate. But he has it now. Good chance to redeem himself. Fifth round coming right up. Rez putting some pressure on the quad side. Flashed in, taking the fight. Amanek is there, and actually Rez was pre-firing that. He knew that there was going to be someone else there, so kind of a heads-up play. Nico's taking up position in this little ninja corner. Ampus is thinking about walking right through it. He's not checking it at all. Nico going to wait to see if there's anyone else there. That's a nice play, even if it's just for the one kill. Yeah, that's got to be frustrating. Plopsy going to try and pressure towards the B-bomb site. It's a nade for his work. Got to stay behind the Molotov. The rest of G2 is getting here as well. A late smoke, but they can't come through it. They don't have the flashbangs to help out Nexa either. Nothing can stream over. B-bomb site is lost for the moment, and nico has got to bail out of the fire. That's actually a great uh, recovery for NIP. I can't believe they, they make it back into this round because it looked a little bit lost for the moment. Instead, Hunter goes down. Device is out hunting Nico. Surviving in spite of the earlier burns and the bomb. No kit. No, you're right. It is ticking away inside of that bomb site. They don't have a smoke or anything to force them into a fight either. So this can actually get a little bit awkward for G2. NIP might be walking away with the fourth round here. Nico not getting the taps to work on Amanek. He's going to have to back on up with that AWP. He can stay in here and probably survive the bomb blast if he goes far enough, but... They're guarding it. They're ready for it. Plopsky does go down, but now he's so low on health, he has to run. And Linus will be there. Four to one. Damn. I mean, the frustration must slowly be building him. It's still early days. Pampers, blind shot to take down Hunter. There's another player up there. Nico, as you said, the other B player normally taken down. They could probably maybe guess that Nexa would also be here, which is maybe why they're also just not rushing into the bomb site. Thanks. All three of the players are here. Even if it's just with pistols. Nice headshot, but not enough for the kill. So, five rounds for NIP. It's G2's turn to play uh, with their with a little bit of adversity, digging themselves out of a hole for the entire half. Late boost up from Jax. This can't win the round, but damage would be great. <laughs> Blob's giving it, please. I know, I've got four teammates and none of them are watching that. No one is. <laughs> Fair play. They had been jumping earlier, so maybe they just made the assumption. Now they're really watching. Everyone ready for that one. Amanek tries to go for a bit of a swing here. Not to get the job done. Jack's also hoping for just another deagle kill if he can get it. Already tagged up low, but you're right. Five to one in favor of NIP. And 
Not a diffuse kit. Oh, I just one on Jax. I was too early. They do have one, and that's nice to see. Pretty common setup right here, although they are leaving Nexer a little bit on his own out here. If he gets the kill, there's going to be a flash, presumably. Yep, just waiting for that one to get in there. He's not falling back at all. And in fact, the Molotov is forcing him to just keep going. Jack's taking some damage on the other side of the map and caught with an aid in hand. Nearly the oh. fire there and the shot on Nico. And he's down and out. It's a four on three with Jax nearly dead. That's fantastic management by NIP and Banana. That's really well done. And yeah, Jax has kind of got to put himself in no man's land because he can't take any fights. And yeah, there's another one. We just mentioned it earlier. Some of these misses from Almanac, they're starting to get brutal. I'm going to need a replay. Especially that. in their simplicity. Did it look, where did the bullet go? Was it he missed. not aiming right on him? I think it missed. I mean, it clearly <laughs> did. But <laughs> my question is how? Okay. Did he have his ears pierced that it just it bullet shot right through? Yeah, I think the crosshair just wasn't on him. I think that's. I think it was on a brick in the background. I. That's where I. We're gonna get the replay for you. We'll, we'll check it out. We'll get slow motion. We'll get a couple different angles. I need that because I have no idea what just happened. I feel like it. In my brain, maybe it is just because, like I said, I am a little bit of a fan of Amanek. Maybe I'm yeah. just trying. In my mind, it's like he's always hitting the shots, but. Yeah, I mean, r regardless, I think the tough part now is some easy shots missed on Ancient, some easy shots missed on Mirage. This yeah. one is the first one here, and it just starts to seep into your game, doesn't it? Start like the universe okay. is actually plotting to screw this up. And me. just so we're all on the same page in the crowd here, Anders is not a rational human being. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is the thought process of an irrational person. Not, I'm rational. It's the, <laughs> it's the world that's wrong, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm fine. I'm absolutely fine. Hunter and Amanek at the A bomb site. Hunter's got an M4. Jax has an M4. That's over towards B. Stacked up in emo. So it's all on Hunter's rifle to hold on to this, and Amanek sees that in the halls. If he can get this kill and find safety in the halls, that'd be huge. That's about the only play available to him. He has the AK. Hunter needs at least one, and he gets it, but they're both immediately traded. Nice work from NIP. They're really on point. They're yeah. playing a very clean T side so far. Yeah, it's impressive. Even even in those really hot situations where one little mistake, you're right, if they let him get away with the AK up there, they have to worry about that when they're playing the bomb, but it's so fast. And they've just thrown their second Molotov towards towards Little Pit and Library, and they have another one on device, so they can just keep this burned out all day. I'm sure Chicho is showing up thinking, all right, just wait, wait until the Molotov is gone, but they just keep being more and more and more nades there. Device, is he going to use it already? No, Hamper's getting a headshot instead. And surely that means they're going to back on out and try and save that M4 on Jax. Yeah, that was always going to be a desperate retake. Yeah. And Device not throwing that Molotov because he's got the op in hand holding the angle. True. He's just like, I don't even need to touch this Molotov. Yeah. And they've got that sick new player from the Academy team. What's his name? Breno. <laughs> <laughs> Dodged that one. <laughs> in style. Oh, Device. That is actually close. Molotov in the corner. Device kind of giving up the angle a little bit there, but yeah, aggressive plays coming out. I'll say that this is the second time Device has gotten to this position really quickly, but missed the information that Nexa had made it to the sandbags. It got, I believe, Hampus or Plopsky killed earlier. This time they don't progress nearly as much. So utility trading has done good damage. Nico is going to get crafty. Pop flash, and they come through the smoke. Nex is going to add a second one. Transfers out instead of reloading, and he's going to force LNZ back with low HP, and this is a good hold of banana. Hunter's got to be careful. With all this attention here, they could just decide to randomly spam this. Yeah. They kind of forgot about it, but you're absolutely right. And he's going to step it right up. Only gets the one kill, but it should still be fine. Man. All right, throwing away the AWP, trying to make sure they can't at least steal that. Not that I think they would really want the double up, but maybe he doesn't know that Amanek has the other one. It's all fine here. Hampus, bomb, 40 seconds. I don't think there's really a way out here, unfortunately. What do you say? Smoke. No, there's nothing he can do here. Smoke the rooftop. That's a good smoke. That might make him think what's happening. <laughs> yeah. Never seen that before. <laughs> At right. least he's got like five smokes to pick up on the way. All right. Going straight for it. Confident? Yeah. Yeah, it's a very risky play to do at this point. Device there, spots next to trying to make the cross. Almost hits the flick. Good nades and good Molotov. Device at about half HP, but still kicking. 
for it. He's backing on out. Surprising that uh, more didn't come from that. Three people there at the beginning, but ultimately no real fight breaks out. Critically, G2 didn't want to hold on to that position at Sandbags. Nexo was there and he could have extinguished the Molotov, but he just backs away, which leaves two smokes at this B bomb site for the rest of the round. So this one should delay NIP. And then Nico's, or excuse me, Nexo still has his. Oh my god, that's a grenade. That actually did so much damage. The timing on when this is deployed, though, is everything. Wait, if they Molotov the both Dark and New Box here, they can actually be in a lot of trouble. I don't know if they will, but they have the Molotovs for it. If they really wanted to, they could have. Instead, they're going to throw the Molotov in front of New Box, and that's not quite the same. Nexa still goes down. Nico in the back, and they know that he's going to be here. They force him up with the grenade. And he's only going to get the one kill. Three on three and charging through his Plopski to take down Hunter. That is a nice little piece of aggressive move. I think he thought that smoke was probably going to cover everything and no one was going to come through that side. Aminek and Jax, two on three. A very risky retake if you want to go for it. I don't think you want to. Jax has no money. Aminek won't be able to afford an AWP. I think you're just going to be happy with... Oh, maybe not. Jax is going for more. Okay. Now I guess it's, it's doable, but it's still risky. That might just bait them into it. And Amanek isn't even making a move forward, so I can't imagine that this is actually going to be an attempt in any way. This could be an economy play, try and take these AK-47s away from the T side. But Amanek just now starting to move up, and he's almost fully committed. Wow. Yeah. Even though the huddle looked weird, it must have worked somehow. Can you teach them how to huddle one day? Oh, Nico. Yeah, Device has been playing that very aggressively for basically eight rounds straight. Finally, someone called him on it. I don't think Device expected an op to be on board since they took it from Amanek in the previous round. Yeah. Well, you said G2 need to run it back quite a bit. They only got the one round, but a chance maybe now to, to add some more. If we get up to, to six-ish rounds, then you still got a, a basis to play that second half off of. We'll see if they can. Six would be great. Yeah. That's what I'm gunning for here. Aminette goes down. Nico rotated all the way over from Banana. Nice turnaround from Hunter dodging the flashbang and taking down Rez. It's pretty impressive. Well, they know one's in holes. You saw him turn and look directly there. And this should be super winnable right now if you're on the G2 side. A little bit of an extended spray. Picking up the bomb is Linus. Can he run back? I mean, he can make it there, but he just can't actually play against Nexa. I think he's just going to he's gonna save his weapon, obviously, at this point. There's plenty yeah. of cash on the other four members of NIP, so even with him, without him getting any bonus money, he can refresh his nades, and they're going to have another full buy in the next round. So G2 get a third on the board, and they survive with four players. They keep the off in play. Not bad. Still a long way to go. Three to eight. It's playing really well. Res and Device, that, that duo is just so lethal. It really is. They're not that far ahead of the rest of the team, but when it's working, it tends to work incredibly well. Oh, this is a lot of damage out onto G2. They're burning. Utility damage has done great work. Even though Nico's got the opening kill, this is recoverable. Four on three now. Yeah, I, I mean... Uh, What's really cool about that play on the bridge when Nico gets that kill is that also pushing up at the same time was Hunter. So they just their focus is on, on the orb up there and maybe not necessarily on the rifle pushing forward. Double setup over here at the B bomb site. See what they could do. They have a nade there, flashes as well. They could try and buy a little bit of time. Three versus four. And now surely it's being called for a lot of nades coming in. There's the nade. Does soften them up just a bit, but Nexa, he falls without taking anyone with him. Deep nade on top of that, and Amanek is going to be dropped immediately by Rez. And just like that, from a three on four into a two on three, favoring the NIP side with the bomb down. Nico sneaking in with that AWP. He's got a good shot at getting this instant headshot on Rez. But is he realizing there's someone right on top of him? He's not in his device. Sniping him down. Hunter has to run for it. It's a ninth round. The power, for NIP. the power of this T side for NIP has been them taking this B bomb site in a variety of different scenarios and situations. Yeah, they've been able to come back. And you're fighting with four upgraded pistols, three deagles, a CZ at AK-47 against a fully kitted NIP, who haven't really had to deal with economic issues in this entire game. A little bit of a push down the middle. 
They do cancel it, but mostly because of the kill. So that's fine. Jax is here. Oh, well, was. <laughs> what, a, what a shutdown. Yeah, and I think that NIP is so happy about that at the moment. You, if Hunter gives you that opening kill and Jax takes that peak and goes down, like, that's an easy equalizing frag to find. It takes a lot of pressure off these anti-deagle rounds when you're not playing 4v5. There must be a temptation in a round like this for G2 to rotate towards the B bomb site because it's been there so much, but they're actually gravitating A. They lose Amanek, unfortunately, or they would have had something like a three-man setup here. So the tragedy is, even in the round like this, where they seem to be guessing it right, they just don't have the firepower or the manpower to defend it, but they have the right idea for the bomb site. It just doesn't really count. That's... I mean, I don't, I don't even know what to say. They are really getting beat up in a big way here. Device... Just caught out just a bit. He will go down, but... It doesn't change the fact that this is about to be 10-3 in favor of NIP. That even rhymes. How do you like that? Nice. How do you like that map? <laughs> <laughs> it's seven years of professional commentary, all culminating in that one rhyme. I know. Mm. I've been just waiting, writing, writing down la lines <laughs> late at night. <laughs> Little notebook. Like, ooh, I finally got an NIP game. This is going to be great. Sat down thinking, what will get that? Uh, yeah, we'll find out. <laughs> You're not committing. <laughs> I'm right. not committing either way. Boxy's going to back off of B. Hampus as well. It was a three-player B start for G2's defense. Dump some utility and back away. Hunter's already at the A-bomb site after the opening. And Hampus just having, just letting G2 know there's presence here with utility. This is all going to be what looks to be a Hall's pop at the moment. LNZ, Rez, Plopsky lining up in the smoke at the moment. Device is chucking out flashbangs and utility. Here it comes. Jax is in lane. Look at this duel here. Good kills, but Hampus and Plopsky doing some work. Hampus able to win that fight, even though you could see Nico knew. Device is on his own, though. One versus three with that AWP. Molotov on top of him. And he doesn't even realize someone's already on the selfie. Yeah, it came out quick. I was like, ooh, a lot of red. This is good. Usually a safe assumption. Not always. 15th round. Last of the half. Hunter is there. No, I actually thought someone was going to walk into that, but I guess not. They have that lean slightly towards the A side. They've got a little bit of an awkward boost here. Could catch someone off guard. And actually, unfortunately for NIP, they don't have really the cash flow to bring into this final round. Still got two AKs. And on res and device, like I said, I really think this res device duo is just incredible. You think it's going to be something special? Yeah, I really do. Okay. Well, two players to defend this rap side. Ooh, and the side of the smoke as well. Hunter needs both. He's not going to get it. Jax feeling very lonely. No good options for Jax at the moment right now, especially he gets a little bit blinded. Very stressful scenario, and yeah, goes down for free. Well, I'm on the way, following swiftly afterwards. Nico and Nexa, two on four. and I You ain't getting your five, Anders. No. You I've... compromise, and you got screwed for it. Don't they understand the nature of the compromises? <laughs> I, I, I say six, you know, we, we sort of we meet at five. I feel like they've just got this all wrong. Device going to get the headshot on Nico. Nexer on his own, and he's looking to be found. As Is Nico with nine kills? We've yeah. seen him in every map just dominating and, and getting up there, and then the kill count. He's been pretty quiet this first half, and he got battered over at that B bomb site as well. Duelies on res. Yeah, I recognize those red duelies. And there's duelies on Plopski as well. They have a lot of pistols brought into this round. I like it. Linus, he's going to get jumped eventually, but Hampus is there picking them off as they run in. Great headshots. Klopski, he's got the same red duelies, and that's that's working out fine. Nico, one versus four to fight his way back in a pistol round. It can be done. What a headshot to bring down Hampus. Turning around, reading it. He knows Rez is right out there, but he's missed the timing maybe by a second. Now, who is going to be more patient? It should be Rez, because the... The pressure is on for Nico to actually try and get something done, and he's fallen just back behind the logs. I just thought he was right in front of them, but fair enough. Oh. Nico, going back to check. He's so sure that they've got him sandwiched in, and he's not wrong either. But that bomb is out there. Kitty 
beat the USP, he's got a good shot of at least getting the bomb down, but... 40 seconds. He's crouching really far back. That must be heard out on Banana, so I wonder if they can guess what's happening and call it in. He's certainly hiding. Rez well, and Device. Now it's Device who hides, and Rez has eyes on the bomb. So yeah. they're just kind of trading. You could see Nico every time Device spots him, he looks for his flank, and yeah, unfortunately, I don't know what's deeper than a, than a hole. What's a deep hole called? There's gotta be something. Pit? Chasm? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, but even if I did, I just, <laughs> you just I wanted to see you struggle with that. <laughs> I'm not sure. Can we? Do, I think I think a deep hole is fine, Jason. Okay. Deeper than a deep hole. <laughs> yeah. The deepest hole. Not just in a hole, a deeper hole. Well, they did not even get the bomb plant down, and that means they can't go for that aggressive AK buy up in the second round, which I'm sure they would have loved, but not really available to them in the same way. One deagle on Nico, everyone else on the Glock. Yeah, th uh, this is just a complete uh, reversal of how every other map has started. NIP have had to claw their way back into both the first two maps to try and get it done. Need on Nico and some of his teammates out there. And they're slowly getting, slowly getting picked apart here. Game's a lot more fun when you get to play from the front. Yeah, more people should really do that. <laughs> it's uh, surprising that's not a more common strategy, you know? Yeah. Well, there's really nothing to, to even talk about with this B hit. There's not a whole lot of resources that G2 have that could make you feel like they're going to get no smoke, no flashes, nothing to even give themselves half a second of, of space to do something. Yeah, and walking into double MP9 means... They can just keep shooting for a long time, even jumping over to different textures, right? They have to sort of just, they're just doubling up, I think. I have no idea. I don't, oh, know, I don't know the rules on things like this, but it would be cool to have one gun one thing and one gun the other. Yeah, like a little bit of... Someone should make that skin. I don't, I don't think it's technically possible, but someone will know for sure. 18th round, AKs are there. They've stuck onto the MP9s and maybe on some of the other maps, you can think, oh, that might be... I actually don't think it's even much of a downgrade on this particular map. They're going to be fine, I'm sure. You can jump and Well, shoot. two of them have just sandwiched and crossfired at the at the base of Banana. I'm I'm actually half surprised Hampus is still here. Obviously trying to bait and lure them into this trap, but you got two SMGs that I don't know if you need that third player. A little bit of damage on an eco. There's the peak. Oh, he's so ready. He's so ready, but you could see he has no idea Plopsky's here. Meanwhile, his whole team has just walked up brackets for free. They're going to head towards Rap side. That's Rez with the M4, and the timing couldn't be worse. Yeah. I think Hampus is going to get heard. He's sprinting to library right now, and G2 is just going to be waiting for him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what a surprise. Three people waiting in the lane, and Rez... Like you said, the timing worked out against him, so he had no warning that they were all going to be showing up. I mean, I think that is potentially some some inexperience on that kind of such a loud rotation. But also, if you're going to do that, you have a teammate device with the flashbang. Call yeah. for the flash so you can actually swing and, and take that fight. But I don't think anywhere in his brain did he think the possibility was there that G2 would be up rap side, considering the timing of Rez's departure from the position. Popsky almost, almost stabbed the chicken, but he thought better of it. Yeah, didn't want those chicken nuggets quite yet. You, you were a fan of the nuggets, generally speaking? Really aggressive and really crisp in that particular round. So that's the kind of Nico that we've seen in the other two maps. If he's back for this third one, that's a, that's a right, nice but start. Remember, you also opened up this map by saying, you know, Nico's gonna need some help. <laughs> so that's that's the other thing. Even if Nico just goes off from here on out, especially yeah. to overcome, you know, this kind of a deficit, you need multiple players involved in the action. We'll see if they can get another person going, another guy going. Jackson, Nico at the base of Banana, Hunter and Omenex slow playing a Hall's take, and obviously Nexa just supporting Banana and keeping his eyes on middle. So just a default start to the round for G2. And for NIP side of things, they've stacked towards A. And also playing extremely passively, not worrying about peeking, not worrying about trying to challenge anywhere, just looking for information at the moment and kind of crossing their fingers that G2 is just going to blind exec into the A bomb site. Oh. <laughs> Eventually guessing it right. Pick him off and 
I don't know if they're just selling this. If they actually do go A, that would be tragic for G2. There's an AK over there. Yeah, I think they're I think they're kind of looking they're realizing. Yeah, they're gonna find it out now. But the, all the utility, not a fake so much as they're they're hoping to draw out some some counter utility to give them information, maybe make somebody move, maybe hear somebody ticking a Molotov. None of that happens and they're gonna call the troops back. Yeah, that's the nice thing about having a little bit of time. Would have been very upsetting if they would have run into the the whole NIP team over there. That means they're going to get a sixth round. I don't think NIP will want to go too aggressively and throw away the AK. They're just surely just going to save it. Six to 13. Still, what a long road back. Interesting to see because it's not that G2 didn't try to do sort of a, a variety of different things on that CT side, but much of it just didn't, never really played out. And like we said, there's a huge weakness towards that B bomb side. Defending that just was not easy almost no matter what. So if NIP fall into the same funk, I wonder if they if they have some tricks of their own to try and get out of it. I mean, we saw G2 at the end uh, aggressively opening A apartments towards the bridge. There, there were some fun things happening. Yeah, they, they certainly went into the playbook Yeah, as that half got more and more out of control. There's obviously nothing worked enough to stabilize. So far leading the way for NIP. Uh, teammates are all right there with them, though. Device opening T side Inferno was positively delightful. It's good to see. If you could do the same on the CT side, I don't think G2 are going to be around for long. Didn't get that flick though. Historically, his CT opening on Inferno has been incredible stuff as well. So yeah. here we go. Yeah, very mobile with it. Playing that um, library corner at the moment, but it means he's obviously closer to rotating over to B. He can. Could just be a little bit more dynamic in that situation. It's still a little bit of top banana control here for Nico, which is kind of cool. Let's see what he can make of it. At least forcing out a couple of smokes on his own, while the rest of the team kind of look like they're trying to play the strat they were last round, where they called it off because they realized B was empty. They're going to try and explode on. They're down into the pit and hampers. That maybe even could have been a triple. Still, they trade evenly, and it's a three-on-three. Three. Device not actually hitting that shot, and maybe that was a big opportunity right there. He's looking for it. Smoke is up. Molotov is up. Jax is going to be going down. And next are Nico. Low on health. Two versus three, and Nico's in the middle. If he pushes too quickly here, he's going to be hurt and found out if he's too late. He's leaving Nexo on his own for maybe way too long. There is two Molotovs left on the NIP side. If they realize that they're up in the apps here, they'll never be able to get out of that position. So very dangerous. Plopsky, he has the other Molotov and he's checking everywhere. And when are they going to realize they're not actually going to throw it up there? That might have been a mistake. Nexa still goes down. Nico. Are they going to guess that he's in the same position? The angle is not quite there. He's not actually stopping the defuse, and it's going to be the round for NI. No one's going crazy. No one's doing anything super nuts. Everyone has just been solid. As we mentioned in the first half, the strength of that T side from NIP was efficient trading. And now Device gets put into play with the off. Double kill and banana. This round's over. That level of confidence is, again, very, very hard to play up against. Just really jumping over the smoke to spot that they're there going for a repeat and then even though there's a lot of stuff out on banana at that moment smoke and fire and everything else he's just he's gonna hit that flick three versus five hunter trying to sneak out but actually just <laughs> wow they threw everything at him yeah fair play i guess on the next turn smoke gonna be fading throwing nades at him and one or the other we're gonna was gonna get him two people holding that arch corner, leaving Nexa. Back in T-spawn with the chickens. It's gonna go for that 48 second save. Yeah, and he, you, he can't even play tic-tac-toe down there. No. How many do that on He's your own? He's got no game? friends, Device is taking them from him. Yeah. That got dark. Or the third map in a game of Counter-Strike. It's tough, I mean, that can be, you know, I'd be interested to see what his what his thoughts are on that situation. Obviously, it's just in general relatively frustrating playing against device with an op as 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 its own thing. But also, when you're going banana that early and you're and an opper is able to get a double kill like that, peeking at half wall, you feel like probably some frustration from what he's thinking might be missed utility, missed Molotov, missed flashbang that should have blinded device, whatever it might be. 13, 14 kills. They're doing pretty well. But they, they are just so many rounds behind. I, I, I can't even begin to put together any kind of a reasonable proposition 
for how they would uh, pick this up. Hampus run boosted over, charging in to take down Amanek, although that's a good return. Hunter is there. Nico to take down Linus with a wallbang shot somehow. Guessing, yeah, over by the car. And it's a four on three, but that's Device a, is still alive. That's a cool play, though, from Hampus to go for that. I like it. I like it from NIP. Device still flirting with this peak, and again, like, just the knowledge that he knows he's not going up against an opera, so why not just challenge? That smoke and boiler gives him some freedom to take this fight. He's actually looking for Hunter, who was just there. He was just walking around that smoke. Feels like this is a very dangerous position for Device to be in. Oh, it is. It's this is down to timing. He could get screwed at any second, and... Ooh. Yeah, and he can't really scope around in that position because that's going to give away his position for sure. Hunter doing nicely in this round. Third kill for him right there. And Plovsky now the one that's just going to have to play hide and seek. But at least he has a chicken with him. At least there's that. You love these chickens. I mean, they're all right. They're all right. For chickens. I don't really have a particular like opinion of chickens at all, actually. Really? No. I'm going to get some chickens next year. Yeah? Yeah. Out on the farm? Down on the farm. <laughs> Some backyard chickens, fresh eggs. That's a good idea. I hear they're great pets. They're, they apparently have, like, personalities and everything. That is true. I actually, yeah. I, yeah. It's part of my family has changed. Not, you're not wrong. I just want the eggs. All right. You're not in for the friendship? No. Well. Not really. <laughs> Plopsky is fighting. He's got that. The angel on the one side, the demon on the other side. Yeah, do I, do I shoot it or not? Cartoon style. How hungry are we? I'm sure, I mean, in that moment, though, you're probably thinking, at least just be quiet. They've got guns, just shh, you know. Yeah, I don't want to have to do this, but... Yeah, but if you keep making this noise... Yeah, if you keep clucking... We're not gonna, we're not gonna... We're, neither of us are gonna make it through it. Exactly. Yeah, maybe the tension's getting to the chicken as well, though. I mean, you... <laughs> It's almost starting to snap, Hunt. Keep him alive at all costs. 23rd round. Backs against the wall in every way possible right now, G2. They need to win eight rounds straight, get it into overtime, then they have to try and win that overtime before we can even have any kind of a discussion here because NIP just a single round away. Pulling around a little bit at the top of Banana, somehow still getting a kill. That looked incredibly disorganized for NIP. That was, that was NIP huddles levels of is organized. <laughs> All right. Four on five for the series. And Nico is out of the fight. Jax taking a shot, spots out Plofsky, at least forces out the smoke. It's not too big of a win. LNZ is there at the B-bomb site. He has a smoke of his own and a Molotov. Eats a bit of nade damage, but again, not going to care about that whatsoever. G2 is lining up for this hit. Smoke just deployed now, so that's going to go out at, what, like 34, 33 seconds, and then there's going to be a Molotov behind it. Yeah, Linus has a counter Molotov of his own that he could try and put down in front. Don't know if it's going to stop the whole team, but now a third player is being rotated in in Hampers, who's not got any more nades, but just him being there could get really interesting to see. Trying to get through early, in fact, and he goes down. I don't know why he wouldn't wait for his team to be there. Now they're in trouble inside of the bomb side. Linus at the back. He's already a little bit soft from earlier, and he can't get that follow-up kill. It's 15 seconds, and the bomb will be planted. Res and Device, like I said, one of the most lethal combos, I think, currently around. Could they do it? Two on three for the retake to try and win this map and this series. That would be something. There was a big opportunity. Airborne Indy, he misses the second shot as well. Could have just as well had it. And yeah, now is the time to back on out. I was going to say, knowing, knowing device, this is a save call for sure after he misses that shot. That was that was the opportunity they needed to, to press the go button on the retake, and they're both going to get out with guns. The team of NIP has no money whatsoever. I'll tell you what, though. That's a botched defense. There's a lot of mistakes yes. in that defense. They're running through the smoke. 24th round. M4 AWP saved from the previous round. Hard to get too excited for G2 yet, because, again, the road back is just so long. They've got a boost to look in the middle, try and offset the angle. If you're ducked down there on the T ramp and you, you, you think that maybe you're going to be safe and suddenly they're looking a little bit deeper, it could definitely be upsetting. All right. They've got two people over at the apartment, so... 
I don't know if they're going to be joining in on this particular situation. Device is going to find Jackson. Look at him instantly rotating. He immediately runs. Yeah, they're happy with that. Although, I, I wonder if Plopsky heard Nico scope up at this corner earlier. But again, G2 playing another round for the whole series in a 4 and 5 previously. Last round, it was Nico going down first. Now it's Jax. If they actually look like they want to go B, because of the pressure here, you could easily forget to check that boost. Look at Hampus. He's clearing out A. He's already pushing in halls. Reza is going to get over there surely in time. Him and Amanek are on the same timeline of rotating over to be involved in the action. Well, he has a smoke, Rez. There's only 30 seconds. If he puts down that smoke, he just did. They can't really wait. They actually just have to keep going here. Pushing through. Amanek AK leading the charge. Linus boosted up, and he does get the kill. Plovsky on the other one. And Nico and Hunter left 20 seconds. Plovsky smartly playing for time. Wait for everyone else to get here. Hunter low on health a little bit, but not enough. Could have been a one-shot headshot there, but... He's going to go for the defu also for the plant behind the fountain. Oh, but Hampers sneaking in, stopping that plant, and Hunter is on his own. One versus Ooh, one against the vice. Time, I think he's just barely got it. And the bomb is on the ground now. Planted and everything. Hunter trying to go for a little bit of a shot. Device has picked up an AK in the meantime. Dips the AK, and he goes down. 21 kills on Hunter. He's overtaken everyone on that G2 side. Good on him. I mean, the quad kill in that last round obviously helps. But yeah, he's silently been up there. 15 to 9. How long are they going to keep toying with this NIP? How long before they put them out of their misery? Surely if you're NIP, you don't toy with anything, right? <laughs> like, I hope not. <laughs> you don't you don't leave anything up to chance. This isn't this isn't a game of Dota. No one's farming for better <laughs> items to win the game and then ultimately lose it. But it is a uh, I mean it's fair play. That is two opportunities to close things out in five on fours. Ooh, that flashbang set up. Hampus shutting it down. It was Rez to set it up. That is textbook. Yeah. Now a five on three. Now a five on two. Well, and surely you don't let this one slip away. Say that. Sure. Say that. Don't call me Shirley. <laughs> <laughs> Next are Nico. Two versus five, and you'll write all day really. I mean, again, play it safe, set up the positions to revenge any kills that are happening, and play for the time. It's really not rocket science, but we'll see. Nico being one of the people alive, obviously, could be an issue. 30 seconds on the clock. There's device taken down next. And now it's a one on five for Nico. He's so done with the series device. Yeah, he's out. <laughs> he, he wants to move on. He's not going to let anyone have a chance here. They boxed him with grenades and everything else.